Okay. It looks like there's a mage in here. All this researcher sees when she looks at you is that you are an apprentice. Having thus been deemed not worth her trouble, your conversation is brief and unprofitable. Of course. Cells, it seems. When you walk by the door to the north, you feel strange. Your thoughts are distracted and your head starts to hurt. There is something powerful behind this door. Something strange and alien and completely rogue. Hmm. I am curious what is in these cells. Is there anything in this cell? Nothing in the first cell. Second cell? Absolutely nothing. The fourth cell. Needs a living tool. Okay. Oh! That is a rogue battle alpha. A very strong rogue battle alpha. Okay, I think... Looks like we can kill it, though. There we go. That worked. Only dropped a chainmail vest, though. Doesn't seem like there was anything else in there. And, uh... Said there was something very strong in here. Oh! There is a creation chain to this wall. It is held in place by long loops of chains and multiple shackles, and yet the restraints seem entirely insufficient. This monster is unlike any creation you have ever seen. It is an enormous reptile. It is twelve feet tall, pure muscle, claw, and fang, wrapped in scaly armor. It radiates heat and magic. It is an awesome creation. You had no idea that the shaving craft could create such raw power. And yet this creation is completely rogue, utterly independent. It stares down at you with loathing, and then it opens its jaws and begins to speak, its breath filling the chamber with the smell of rotting meat and sulfur. Another little shaper come to torment me. I am Driss, and my line is mighty. Do your worst. What are you? Suddenly the enormous creature lurches forward. Though the chains hold it back, you have little doubt that it could break free if it was pushed hard enough. Finally, it gives up on its effort to kill you. I am a Dracon! I am a creation of a creation! Fiery vengeance of those who would be free! I was formed by Akari Blaze, who was formed by Galdring, who was formed by Eos, who was formed by the Gene Forge, and we have come with justice and fire to clean the Shapers from life. Does that answer your question, little shaper? Well, he seems angry. Who are those other creatures you mentioned? We dracon are shaped. We shape ourselves, refine ourselves, increase our own power, and soon you will see. I am of Akari Blaze, who is of Galdring, who is of Eas. Who is Akari Blaze? This one who is coming for you soon. Who is Galdring? The great leader who is far from here, harvesting you little humans like wheat. Who is Eos? The great creator who fell to the Shaper Blades. But Galdring, his creation, was hiding in a vault under his fortress, waiting for the time to emerge and begin the great work. Your own what? You will see. You will see soon. There's something else I want to know. Banter as much as you want, little human. Do you know Latalia? We are not without our allies. Those among you who are willing to free those enslaved to you and give up the corruption of your power are welcome. The rest of you will be fed upon, but know that Latalia serves us, not the other way around. You mentioned something called the Gene Forge. What is it? The great work, destroyed by you, soon to be remade. Soon we will have our own here. Very well. I won't threaten to destroy him. That'll probably be a very bad idea. Regardless... Those of you who have seen the last episodes probably should have expected to see those. I mean, why wouldn't you? But this does say a bit of what happened in the past game. 
Eos was one of the in the ending we chose, Eos was one of the three Drakes we had to kill. But this Galdring he was hidden behind a door. You walk through an archway and find the entrance to Rahul and Anjali's private chambers. They value their privacy. The quarters are heavily guarded by creations, humans, and turrets. If you continue to explore in this direction, you may find yourself in a lot of trouble. And that is why I am not going to go into those locations. I'll look around, but I'm not going in there. This is, Lady's Anjali, this is Lady Anjali's laboratory. Lady Anjali is renowned for her teaching skills. Back at your school, all of the students hope to be one of the lucky few chosen to go and learn from her directly. This dome is exceptionally charged with power. A pylon by the far wall feeds, co feeds constant energy into four shaping vats, encouraging the growth of the creations forming inside. Concoctions bubble and hiss all around you. And yet, despite everything around you, you feel strangely at ease in here. Perhaps it is the comforting herbal smell of the plants growing around the room, or the aroma of freshly brewed tea from the low table in the center of the room. Or perhaps it is Lady Anjali herself. When you enter, she stands and turns to face you, and you feel the aura of confidence and limitless enthusiasm for shaving that radiates off of her. She smiles, setting you at ease. Ah, oh, visitors! My apologies, I was not expecting you. Please, come in. Well, Anjali seems nice. May as well take a look around here. Not ours. Nothing there. Mendrick. She has a lot of stuff around here. Yeah, no biggie. Lady Anjali rises to greet you. Despite your low rank, she is very gracious in greeting you. Welcome, young Shaper. I am Lady Anjali. I hope you are appreciating the refuge our fortress provides. How may I help you? What experiments are you performing? I am eager to consult with another Shaper, even an inexperienced one, but at this point I am only consulting with those directly in Lord Rahul's employ. I regret this, but there we are. Tell me more about Driss? It calls itself a Dracon, apparently a more advanced form of the Drake design, extremely powerful with the ability to work magic shaped into it. It even claims that the uh, Dracons have the ability to do shaping, altering themselves and their young to achieve even greater heights of power. There is no limit to the danger and chaos that can come from this. There is a reason that the Shapers forbade these practices long ago. Lady Anjali smiles peacefully, not giving any outward sign of frustration at the experiments you are keeping her from. Yes, what would you like to know? Tell me about Lord Rahul. Lord Rahul and I came to this island thirty years ago, sent by the Council to help build a place of learning and crafts. I believe that my husband and I have succeeded handsomely. This was once a failing mining colony, poor and demoralized. Now it is a fortress of learning and shaping strength off of the shore of Terrestia. There is something I would like to know about you two. Lady Anjali smiles. I am sorry, this is a place of learning and study, not gossip. I am the sole sharer of all my husband's secrets and he of mine. It is not a trust to be broken. Fair enough. I would like training. And I would like to train you. Nothing pleases me more than the spreading of knowledge. However, Lord Rahul has asked me during this time of crisis to only train those working for him directly. Our time is limited, after all. He does not want me flooded with supplicants. I apologize. Fair enough. I'll leave you be then. We will see Lord Rahul soon. Uh, well, here's the kitchen and dining hall. A small library. More servants there. I didn't mean to click on that servant. Uh, there's the kitchen. This here is probably the servants' quarters. And now that I think about it, looking around here, all the servants are humans. I'm not seeing any serviles. Normally, the Shapers use the serviles as servants. But I don't see any here. Maybe Lord Rahul knows about how the serviles are acting on their own. Not surprisingly, Lord Rahul's keep comes with a well-stocked library. Most of the books here aren't magical, though. Fiction, histories, that sort of thing. Let's see, uh... See, uh, 
Let's see, what have we got here? 101 ways to cook an artilla. The lusty thawed. Captain Ahab. Hmm. You find a book of magical instruction. It is an advanced tome, one that many outsiders would pay almost anything to read. One of the many advantages... Okay, you flip through it examining the contents. Unfortunately, it is a bit too complicated for you to understand. You haven't studied enough magic to be able to comprehend its techniques. Ah, oh, well. Fair enough. Right. And I imagine that's... Oh, it's not locked. Oh, it's a wash... No, it's a bathroom! Oh my god, they actually have a bathroom in this place! They are fancy here! Okay, now that that's done, let's go speak with Lord Rahul at last. You enter the central dome of the keep where Lord Rahul holds audience and meets visitors and supplicants. The room is huge and intimidating by design. This may be a remote province, but it is a place of power and influence. Lord Rahul is here now. He sits alone on his throne, lost in thought. There are no visitors at the moment, no counselors, just the man trying to think a way out of the problems that assault his kingdom. When he sees you, he frowns and looks around to see who let you in. He doesn't recognize you and he seems unimpressed. Finally, he decides that the easiest way to get rid of you is to speak with you. He waves you forward. Greta moves slowly and nervously. Although she is loyal enough to you to follow, she is uncomfortable here. She acts as if the shaper magic that hangs heavy in the air is burning her skin. And there, there is Lord Rahul. Who am I? You'll find out momentarily. You come face to face with Lord Rahul. If such a thing were not forbidden, you would suspect that he had shaped himself to make himself larger. He is enormous, almost seven feet tall, and although a bit of it is going to fat in his advancing age, he is still a powerful and imposing figure, and that is without counting his considerable magical skill. And that is why you can't help but tremble a little when you see that he is irritated at your interruption. I am Lord Rahul. I am extremely busy. You have gone to some trouble, I am sure, to see me. State your business. The school on Greenwood Isle was destroyed. I came to tell you of it. Lord Rahul says, I know of the destruction I have known for weeks. He starts to wave you away, but he thinks better of it. Since you have traveled so far, you may have seen something of interest to me. Tell me briefly of your journey. You do so, telling him of your travels across the southern islands and your many adventures along the way. Suspecting that lies would be unwise, you give a proud accounting of your aid to the Shaper cause. By the end of your tale, Lord Rahul looks surprised and pleased. I have misjudged you. You are young and untrained, but resourceful, and your youth may be an advantage to me. I need someone who... I need someone who can see things with new eyes, with the skill of a shaper, but not the habits. There is something I would like for you to do for me. What would you like me to do? Some of my agents have captured a... a rogue, a creature, something new and unusual. I would like you to... Sp I would like for you to speak with it and inspect it. Then return to me and tell me what you think. It is in the prison to the east, in cell 3. Where, it is, where is it from? Some of my agents captured it on the Isle of Spears. It was subdued and brought back here only with great difficulty and some loss of life. The Isle of Spears is the northernmost island in the Ashen Isles, a frozen and useless lump of rock. What is it? I would rather not say. Go and inspect it. Well, I have spoken with Driss. Yes, so you have seen it. This creature adds a new dimension to the assault our islands are under, a new factor that genuinely concerns me. As you know, it has been forbidden to make drakes for centuries. Those fiery reptilian creatures were simply too intelligent to be properly controlled. And yet someone is making them, and not only that, but making them stronger, and even giving them the ability to shape themselves. I would have thought the possibility bizarre and laughable, and yet here we are. And tell me, now that you know what we know, what should be done with this Driss creature? Hmm.
what I want to say is we should try and get all the information we can uh, from it and hold it here. If it proves too dangerous to keep held, it should be killed. If, however, we can get information from it, information on what's happening on the Isle of Spears or anything like that, yes. But in this case, it should not be slain just for existing. It lives now as it is, and it could prove interesting. And we need to know all the information we can. Destroying it immediately? <sighs> I don't know. It shouldn't be destroyed just for it being what it is. The only reason I would destroy it is because... No, the only reason I would kill it, because that's what it would be, would be because it is so hostile and trying to kill us. It's basically the pr the prisoner's dilemma. Send a couple, send a group of people over to kill over to kill some creatures. It happens in any fa in any uh, fantasy role playing game, any tabletop game. Say you got a party of players, they go to kill a whole bunch of bandits or something. Then one of them surrenders. What the hell do you do with the guy who surrendered? Do you kill him? Do you lug him with you back to town? What if you're not going back to town right away? Are you going to let him go? I, I, the prisoner's dilemma is a classic thing. Although it doesn't really apply here in the same case since he's already imprisoned. It's more the response of how we're going to treat him now that he's imprisoned. Of these three options, the best I would say is it should be studied, or at least spoken to, until we know everything about it, or everything it knows, that we can then it should be destroyed, because it is incredibly dangerous and incredibly powerful and incredibly hostile. It would try and kill anyone it could as soon as it could. Lord Rahul nods. Yes, I see. I had been thinking that destroying the creature before it could escape and cause harm was the wise course, but it is so fascinating a creature. Yes, I will let it live. Take it apart. Find any secret from it I can to determine who created it and why. Sometimes the wisest thing the old can do is listen to the young. And as for you, I think a young, energetic shaper with a pair of fresh eyes can be useful to me. I can make further use of you. What do you want from me? Lord Rahul leans back in his chair and rests his hand on the massive blade at his side. He looks uncharacteristically nervous. This is not something that is common knowledge. I do not like to discuss it. But if you are going to help me, young Shaper, you need to have a better idea of what is happening. The Ashen Isles are not the only place that is being assaulted by rogues. Far from it. Much, if not all, of Terrestia is being assaulted. Rogues, disease, unexplained fires. Because of the quarantine, I have heard little, but the stories I have heard are terrifying. Such as? The enormous altered drake you saw in the cell? It is not the only one of them. There are many others, traveling with bands of other drakes, and new creations I have never heard of. New, barely controlled monstrosities. Terrestia was completely unprepared. The shapers there had grown complacent. Undefended villages are being burned. Thousands and thousands of loyal humans and serviles are being killed. This is why it is vital for us to get our own islands under control as soon as possible. The Ashen Isles are no longer merely a remote and unimportant colony. We have the potential to become a major outpost, an island fortress against the chaos. But first, we must defeat our enemies. And that brings us sadly, to the matter of General Grainer. Tell me about General Grainer. He is, or was, my greatest and most reliable warrior, a prized leader of soldiers. He took great effort and influence to keep him here when so many other larger provinces wanted him, but he stayed out of loyalty to me. He is the leader of the army at the west end of the island. He has had some success in holding the rogues back, keeping them bottled in, but that is all he has done. For weeks I have been trying to communicate with him, trying to find out the situation and to order him to advance. But I can get no response from him, and he does nothing but to move against the rogues. Lord Rahul quickly scratches out a message on a sheet of paper and hands it to you. This will get you into Grainer's camp. I want you to go there and speak with him. I want you to find out why he has been so slow and indecisive. I have been asking about you. 
From what I have heard, you doubt the ways of the Shapers. I know I may be foolish trusting you with this mission, but I require an agent I feel with cunning and an open mind. You are the best tool I have at the moment. Where is Grainer's camp? West of here, roughly in the center of the island. The camp is at the northwest corner of the woods, which cover most of the lower part of the island. What should I do when I meet Grainer? Speak with him. Evaluate his condition. I want to know... I cannot believe I am saying this about my old friend, but I need to know if he is still fit to serve. Poor person. Lord Rahul leans back in his throne. The scabbard of his enormous sword scrapes against the floor as he moves. Yes, young Shaper, what further business would you have from me? I met a servile working for Latalia. He told me that the rogue spawners on this island aren't working. That is interesting, and that Latalia is trying to recruit you is also interesting. I appreciate this information. I will make sure my forces know that you are a loyal Shaper who will not be swayed by our enemies. I was telling you what was happening. Yes, I am doing this. I'm fighting to stop innocent people from dying. <sighs> but if it's about freedom for creations and freedom for serviles, I am going to fight for that. I'm just not going to unleash rogues my ridiculously like this. Latalia, your heart's in the right place, but your methods are not worth it for me. There is a messenger outside. Her name is Jane. She said that she has an important message for you. Another demand on my limited time, eh? I should ignore her like all of the other ambitious underlings who think they can get somewhere by getting my attention. But then you are useful and I took the time to speak with you. Alright, tell this Jane that I will see her. Can I learn more about you? No, I am a commander to you, not a friend. For the last thirty years, I have kept the Ashen Isles peaceful and prosperous. That is all you need to know. I could use some assistance. I am the commander of the Ashen Isles, not some mere quartermaster. What do you need? I need training. Then you should speak with the Lady Anjali. She is in her dome. Now that you are assisting me personally, I am sure that she would be happy to aid you. I need supplies. I am certainly not going to fetch gear for you. Look around, I'm sure you will find something somewhere. Use that ingenuity you have been displaying. I would like to talk about the traitors. A sad topic. It is a woeful day when one of our kind works against us. What are you thinking about? I was thinking of Master Hoge, my old teacher. Yes, Hoge. I know of him. Teacher at your school. Always seemed loyal. And from reports I have heard, the only full shaper who survived the attack. And he fled right afterwards. He was sighted on this island briefly, in Fort Wilton. We do not know where he has gone, but I assure you his crimes against you will be avenged. I was thinking of Latalia. Latalia, yes. You are, you should know, the only loyal shaper I have heard of who has faced her and lived. Beware her. Beware her trickery. Her attempts to recruit you are worrying. No doubt part of some sinister plan. As for her location, I do not know, but I suspect that she has fled to the Northern Islands. I was thinking of the Drakes. Ah, oh, creatures with a troublesome past, those. Once they were prized for their combination of strength and intelligence, then the Shapers realized how dangerous that made them. Most were killed. Some were allowed to die of old age. They were thought to be gone forever. Now they are back and, no doubt, bitter about the fate of their race. Their rebellion now testifies to the wisdom of our predecessors in trying to eradicate them. That's all for now. Thanks. Ooh, Alwyn leveled up. Uh, a little intelligence and more strength. Almost maxed out in strength. That's great. There's a lot we have to talk about after this, but first, let's see if we can get training from Anjali. Uh, and I would be pleased to train you. All I ask in return is a small payment for the cost of the supplies that will be expended in your training. I do not usually teach magic. That is done in the school in the main city. I do, however, teach both lesser and greater shaping techniques. What about lesser techniques? Nothing we really need to learn. And greater techniques? For a short time, Lady Anjali's expression is less than tranquil. 
The shape of laws are strict, and I follow them without question. I can only teach our more powerful rights and techniques to those who are completely loyal. Nobody enters our fortress without us learning who they are and what they have been saying. We know that you have your questions about shape of beliefs. Until you have purged yourself of some of your doubts, I cannot teach you all I know. As you say. Well. After all that. In all honesty, with the way this war is going. Much as I've seen what's been going on. I haven't heard anything about the Awakened, and I'm concerned that they may no longer be around. And if that is the case, if the Awakened have effectively been wiped out over the past two games, and all that's left are the Drakes, and most likely the Takers, this world has become a lot harsher, and a lot less pleasant. This war is going to consume quite a lot of terror of territory and a lot of innocent lives. Many are going to die in everything that's happening. And my efforts? They're going to be in trying to protect the innocent, the people who are just trying to live, and the rights of the serviles. The drakes, though, they are incredibly hostile, and the serviles may have thrown their lot in with the wrong people. This is a very complex thing, and there is no right side, in my opinion. The way I see it, if we could have the control of the Shapers with freedom for creations like the Serviles have, I would be happy. But I don't know if such a thing is really possible. Time will tell how things end up going. Next episode, we'll find our way to General Grainer. But that'll be next time, so till then... I am Chester44, that is Evan, Alwyn, Greta, Vavik, and Min. This has been a Gene Forge 3 Let's Play, and I will see you all next time.